I offended the Hall family and can't go home. Swain didn't dare to openly confront the Hall family risking being expelled from the family. He borrowed some money for me and opened a small room in a remote hotel. I lay alone on the wooden bed in the small hotel, only then did I realize that I was heartbroken. Ding! Wisnavel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. The sadness of heartbreak surged towards me like a burst dam. Suddenly, I felt as if my heart was hollowed out, even breathing was painful. Images of Merlin kept appearing in my mind. His appearance when I angered him and cursed at him, his proud appearance when he ordered me around, his thinking that I was shy when I confessed to him, his passionate look when he kissed me, his selflessly protecting me from harm. I finally realized that I had completely lost him. I lost him. No one will ever love me like he did. I suddenly wanted to die quickly. Even though I was already expelled from school, why won't they let me die? Let me die quickly. Let me die in the nightmare and wake up with all the pain gone. Footsteps seemed to sound outside the door. The footsteps stopped in front of my door, followed by the sound of knocking. My heart suddenly filled with anticipation, is it Merlin? I straightened my clothes, smiled on my face, and eagerly opened the door. Kathy, I bought some daily necessities for you. The person outside the door was Swain. I felt a strong disappointment in my heart, my mood plummeted. Why do you look so bad? Didn't sleep well last night? He walked in and closed the door. I didn't have the energy to answer him, I lay down on the bed to continue sleeping, letting him tidy up in the room, chattering away. I don't know how long it took, the door suddenly knocked again. I no longer had any expectations. On the day I left, Merlin didn't even spare me a glance. He gave up on me, he no longer liked me. It should be a delivery. Swain went to open the door. I closed my eyes, hoping to fall asleep quickly. Oh, Merlin Hall, why are you here? I heard Swain's teasing voice. I suddenly opened my eyes, turned my head to look outside the door. Merlin was standing there, wearing a black duckbill cap, dressed in a black tracksuit. Exuding a hint of gloominess and strangeness. He glanced at me, a touch of darkness flashed in his eyes. He raised his hand and fiercely punched Swain. Swain couldn't dodge in time, a bruise immediately appeared on his face, and the two of them immediately started fighting angrily. I stared closely at Merlin, ignoring everything else, and a great joy surged in my heart. He came to see me. I immediately got up from the bed, ran over happily, and excitedly hugged him. Merlin, I missed you so much. You finally came to see me. Did you really come to see me? Am I dreaming? Merlin stopped, he stood up and hugged me back, whispering in my ear. Yeah, I came to see you. Merlin took me away from that rundown motel. I was immersed in the joy of seeing him again and followed him to his apartment. But as the joy gradually cooled, I felt a hint of hesitation. I was about to die soon, how could I entangle myself with him? We were destined to have no future together, I shouldn't be involved with him anymore. Merlin, why did you bring me here? We've already broken up. I said, my voice trembling uncontrollably, feeling a sharp pain in my heart. The hotel you were staying at is not safe. I was worried, so you can stay here from now on. He said with concern. I wanted to refuse, but looking at his worried and caring eyes, my throat choked up and I couldn't say the words of rejection. Kathy, you said you missed me earlier, and I'm happy about it. I miss you too. Every minute and every second you were away, I thought about you. He held me in his arms. As I listened to his confession, my heart felt both sweet and sour. He still liked me, he hadn't given up on me. But, we can't be together. Why not? We clearly like each other, why can't we be together? Merlin suddenly sounded a bit agitated. Is it because of Swain Lloyd? Do you like him, right? Will you only like me as long as he is gone? As I listened to his words, my heart skipped a beat. What did he mean by he's gone, what was he planning to do? It's not because of Swain Lloyd. He's my cousin, there's nothing between us. I hurriedly explained. Merlin became calmer, he hugged me and whispered in my ear. Then why? Tell me, please? 
I love you, and I want to be with you forever. You obviously like me too, can you bear to be separated from me? I will love you forever, and we will be happy together. He kissed my earlobe and gradually moved down, his hot breath touching my skin, making me tingle all over. I was immersed in the illusion he created. Under his enchantment, I confessed everything. I told him that this world was just a novel world. And I became a cannon fodder supporting character. He was the male lead in the book. I just needed to complete the supporting character's plot and return to the real world. Now that the supporting character's plot was almost finished, I would die soon and return to the real world. He and I could never be together forever. After listening to my words, Merlin didn't say much, he only begged me for more time. He said our time together was too short, and there were many things we hadn't done together yet. He hoped we could have more beautiful memories between us. I agreed. The cannon fodder supporting character would be killed in a car accident on the street. As long as I was careful and didn't go out to the street, I should be able to buy some time. We spent happy times in the apartment, sleeping and waking up together every day, recording our lives with a camera, as if living in a beautiful dream. I was immersed in this dream, unwilling to wake up. Until Merlin brought a man to our apartment. Kathy, this is Dr. Walsh. Haven't you been feeling sleep-deprived recently? I asked him to come and check your health. He said with concern. I could have gone to the hospital directly. Why did you bring the doctor to our home? I looked at the doctor holding a box in his hand, feeling puzzled. You forgot, you can't go out casually now. He said nervously, don't make me worry. Okay. I looked at the worry and fear in his eyes and couldn't bear it. Every time going out was mentioned, he would be extremely nervous. I could only listen to him and be cautious. Merlin took the doctor to the room to set up the equipment and I went to the kitchen to make tea for them. But halfway there, I realized that I had taken the teapot to the room, so I immediately turned back. Just as I reached the door of the room, I heard something being knocked over inside. Instinctively, I stopped in my tracks. And then I heard voices coming from inside. Are you really planning to hypnotize her? Let me make it clear, I can't guarantee the effectiveness of hypnosis 100%. We won't know if it's good or bad until after the hypnosis. You just need to modify a small part of her memory. Regardless of the outcome, you must not harm her body. My body instantly turned cold, and I couldn't control the shiver that ran through me. The doctor wasn't here to examine me at all, he was going to hypnotize me. Merlin wanted to alter my memory. He wanted to turn me into a puppet he could manipulate. I held my breath and didn't dare to make a sound. I couldn't let them find me. I had to escape, otherwise, there would be no chance. I tiptoed carefully out of the room, went to the living room to grab my phone, opened the front door, and hurriedly left the apartment. The apartment was on the eleventh floor. I pressed the elevator button, anxiously staring at the numbers on the elevator screen. The elevator slowly ascended. Kathy? I seemed to hear Merlin calling my name, and then my phone started ringing. I quickly hung up the call, raised my hand and desperately pressed the elevator button, faster, even faster. The apartment door at the end of the corridor opened, and the elevator door opened at the same time. I hurriedly stepped into the elevator and saw Merlin running out with a terrified expression. Kathy, where are you going? Stop! I desperately pressed the closed door button. The elevator door slowly closed, and Merlin was getting closer and closer, about to catch up. My heart was pounding in my throat, but luckily the elevator finally closed and started to descend. I sat alone in the elevator, huddled up, breathing heavily, my throat dry and painful, tears uncontrollably streaming down my face. Why? Why did it turn out like this? How could he treat me like this? The elevator reached the first floor. I wiped away my tears and quickly got out of the elevator, running outside the residential area. I had to leave here. I couldn't let them hypnotize and erase my memories. Kathy. I heard Merlin calling my name and I ran even harder. His voice became clearer and clearer, he would catch up to me soon. A strong sense of despair suddenly arose in my heart. I panicked and glanced back at the person chasing after me. He was getting closer, about to catch up. 
Kathy. The car is coming, get out of the way. No. I heard Merlin's terrified and desperate shout, but before I could react, I felt myself collide with something. I lost my balance and flew up in the air, then landed heavily on the hard road. It felt like my organs were displaced, the salty blood surged up my throat and flowed out of my mouth. I felt like I couldn't control my body anymore. It was stiff and numb, every inch of it was filled with excruciating pain, as if it would shatter with the slightest movement. Kathy, don't be afraid, the ambulance will be here soon, you'll be fine. Merlin knelt in front of me, reaching out to hug me, but then hesitated and pulled back. Merlin, why? Why are you treating me like this? I mustered my last breath to ask him. I just don't want to be separated from you. I don't want you to go back to your world. I want you to stay, I want to be with you. Merlin looked pained and confused. Why did you leave me behind? Why couldn't you stay with me? But, I, I never belonged here. I felt my strength draining away, unable to keep my eyes open. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I was wrong. Don't talk, the doctor is coming, you'll be fine, don't be afraid, I'll be here with you. Merlin kept wiping the blood from my lips, as if it would stop flowing if he cleaned it all away. Merlin, I'm so sleepy. I raised my hand, trying to grab his hand. Goodbye. When I opened my eyes again, I returned to the real world. I was lying in bed, looking at the familiar bedroom, feeling a strange sense of familiarity as if it had been a lifetime ago, and couldn't tell if everything in front of me was real or illusory. Until I heard my mom's thunderous shout. Kathy Bell. If you don't get up now, I will beat you with a broom. I'm getting up. I reflexively bounced out of bed, quickly got dressed, and went to freshen up. You promised me last night that you would get up early today. You were just talking nonsense. She scolded me relentlessly. This time doesn't count, I promise it will next time. I grabbed two buns from the table and ran out. I rode my bike to school, memories slowly flooding back. It turned out that from the moment I entered the world of the novel to the moment I came back, only one night had passed. I woke up after a nap, and I couldn't distinguish whether my encounter with Merlin was real or just a dream. I sat in the classroom, surrounded by familiar classmates, familiar teachers, and a familiar environment. But my heart felt empty all along. I remembered the last look on Merlin's face, he looked desperate and sad, his eyes red and mournful, as if he had been crying. I remembered him saying he wanted to be with me forever. I remembered him asking why I abandoned him. I remembered everything about him. Kathy, why are you crying? My deskmate asked nervously. It's nothing. I spoke, only to find that my voice was already choked with tears. After class at noon, I wandered aimlessly in the campus and unknowingly walked to the snack street. I saw a milk tea shop in front of me and suddenly remembered the night when Merlin blocked the knife for me, holding a cup of milk tea for me, and spilled it all in the end. One cup of milk tea. Two voices sounded at the same time, and I turned my head to look, my pupils suddenly shrank. Merlin Hall. I doubted whether I missed Merlin too much and was hallucinating? He couldn't possibly be here. I stared at him fixedly, his eyebrows furrowed slightly, and he looked at me, his eyes completely unfamiliar and indifferent. The joy that had just risen in me was extinguished by cold water. He wasn't Merlin Hall. Do you need something? He spoke. His voice was exactly the same, and my silent heart suddenly started beating again. I, I'm Kathy Bell. I nervously spoke. I looked at him expectantly, would he remember me? Oh. The corner of his lips lifted slightly, a smirk that wasn't really a smile. I remembered when I first met Merlin, he was just as arrogant and domineering as the person in front of me, not putting anyone in his eyes. He didn't remember me. Maybe he wasn't the Merlin I knew at all. That's fine too, at least this version of him won't get hurt. The milk tea was quickly made, and he was about to leave. I anxiously reached out to grab him, but stopped just before touching him. Merlin turned his head to look at me, his eyebrows raised slightly, without saying a word. I stiffly withdrew my hand. Goodbye. Merlin seemed amused and chuckled softly. Goodbye.